Cinema Lounge, where we stay casually relaxed and talk about topics of movies. Uh, yes, the upcoming episode is going to be about Batman, so we figured we'd talk about uh, Batman and Robin. Uh, Morgan recently showed James and I Batman and Robin, and uh, I figured, what the hell, is it really that bad? Is it that bad of a Batman movie? Is it? Is it? Because I've been thinking about it since he showed it to us. I was like, wow. Mm hmm. Oh. Well, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of, uh, a good to, a good, a good thing to revisit, uh, per se. Uh, but I remember, I remember when I was a kid, uh, feeling, uh, feeling like there was, uh, there was a solid, a solid deal of effort being put into it. And, uh, yet at the same time, it, it kind of, uh, it kind of felt like, it, it kind of felt like thing, things were definitely off. I always noticed, um, uh, looking back on it now, I don't, I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a really bad, uh, I don't think it's a really, really bad movie or anything of that nature, but where the where the writing hurts and the editing hurts it it definitely shows yeah um it's definitely the script the script is totally like the writing is really horrible um editing yes there's obviously editing stuff that you may notice like after james watched it and he's like there's this one scene and it's like why is that happening? And he looked it up on uh, for goofs at IMDb, and it was like true. So it's just like the little goofs in there are, are still in, in the movie, and just it's very. Oh, it's not. It, it's not just a goof. I'm surprised nobody else noticed it. <laughs> exactly, uh, but it, it was just labeled under goofs under IMDb as they do it because they do the mistakes thing. Um, but it's just it's it's not that bad. It's just. It looks very colorful, at most. Like mm -hmm. it's really nice to look at. Like you can actually watch it. You know, to look at the, the backgrounds where it's mixed, with Madden paintings and CGI and models, and it just looks really cool to look at. Uh, of course, like I said, the writing is bad. The, the puns. There's so many puns. It's unbelievable. Like if you like puns, you might like this movie. But otherwise, my God, so many puns. So many puns. And it's not just. And it's not just Mr. Freeze's character either. Right. I think that was uh -huh. that was one of the biggest uh, knocks against the film ever since it got released. Uh, I remember I remember reading through Disney Adventures magazine uh, at the time. Uh, they pumped up this movie. It was. Uh, you know, when it was coming out, they, they had articles about it and everything because that's what they do. It was a, it was a, a pop culture magazine. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it's not, doesn't matter if it's not under the Disney title. They'll mm -hmm. still, still talk about it. And uh, when they, at the, at the end of the year, they had an article, uh, that uh, yearly tradition where they had a Hall of Fame, Hall of Lame. Uh, and uh, one of the things that went into the Hall of Lame was uh, Mr. Freeze's puns. They said that they... They said that they... Uh, he did so many puns, that bad puns, that uh, they wish that... They wish that his freeze gun would have turned around and freeze his mouth shut. Wow. Uh. Yeah, but he's no. not the only character in the film that does puns. No, I noticed that really quick. I was like, "Wait, that was a pun! What the fuck, you guys?" Mm-hmm. It's George Clooney. George Clooney, like, his Batman is not a good Batman because he plays both Bruce Wayne and Batman in the same manner. Like, you know, with the character itself, you know, you're spo he's supposed 
with Batman. He's supposed to, you know, portray Batman as like a dark, fearful kind of sort of character. And of course, this is the era where uh, Batman films are kind of goofy and corny. I guess with Batman and Robin, it was being portrayed as more like a cartoon more than anything else. Like, that's what Joel Schumacher said. It's like, remember, this is a cartoon. Liven it up kind of thing. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the th- yeah. Basically, with uh, with what Joel Schumacher wanted to do is that he wanted to bring in a new approach to Batman, and he want like from what I've heard in interviews, not only does he want to make it more like a cartoon, but he really wanted to make it more reminiscent to the nineteen sixties Batman, where pretty much um, where like where nothing is really taken seriously. You can tell that it's low budget. And everything seems more over the top, especially with the Bam Pals and all that kind of stuff. So he wanted to bring Batman more towards that direction. And, like, I guess this would be more of a response to what happened with, um, uh, was it Batman Returns, Tim Burton's sequel to Batman? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where it like, was... Like, I, I heard the criticism, like, at the time, the major criticisms that people had with it is that it was way too dark. And, um, like, it, it was dark to the point that, like, it really freaked people out. It's even darker than Tim Burton's standards. So they wanted to, like, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what the studios wanted as well. They wanted to get someone to really liven it up. And then that's why you bring in jo- Joel Schumacher. And what seems to have worked, and for the most part, he seems to have, he, he seemed to have found some success with, uh, uh, with Batman Forever, where, like, it, it's not fully hated, but people, mm-hmm. like, it's it's not as accepted as the 1989 Batman, but people still accept it nonetheless, especially when you also got superstars like Jim Carrey as the Riddler or Tommy Lee Jones as Harvey Dent. But then, thing, then like, he tried to take it a step further with uh bat with batman batman and robin and i and i think that's where things start to really fall flat is that he made it a bit more cartoonier he wanted to go more over the top with it he wanted to really like you know make it a full-on comedy almost a parody even of the batman movies Mm -hmm. and and i'm the guy uh, for the record, I'm the guy who, I think, personally, I uh, I prefer Batman Returns over over the first uh, Batman for for many different reasons. I like that. I like that level of uh, of of twisted darkness that uh, that Burton brought to the universe, and he was just sort of unhinged there. Um, but with the Schumacher Batman films, which are, they're still, they're all canon. They're all technically canon. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Even though they have different actors playing, playing Batman, hey, you know what? They, they have the same, they have the same guy playing, uh, they have the same guy playing Commissioner Gordon in all, in all four films. So that's the... Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's the connection. Yeah, and plus issue. the fact that Warner Brothers is not afraid to mention it, even now with the uh, the the commercial, the yeah, the, the teaser trailers for the Lego Batman movie, they're not afraid to mention the year that like those movies were released. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So what I what I look at and I see and I see with uh, Batman and Robin, the good parts of it. Um, the good things I can say about it is that um, uh, I like the color schemes that they're that they're going for. If you know they're they're really they're really bright colors, but every if you watch the film, you notice that every every character seems to have uh, have a, a common color scheme going for them. Obviously, with Mister Freeze, it's blue. Um, because hey, cold and whatnot. But then again, uh, you look at you look at other characters like Poison Ivy before she before she becomes Poison Ivy. 
it, even her lair, uh, her her laboratory, it's all it's all sort of a a green yellow sort of tint to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and with the with the bat cave, it's it's a mixture of I should say. Uh, I should say strong dark colors. I I seem to to see a lot of uh, a lot of reds, a lot of blues, a lot of purples. Um, it was it was all uh, for something that's supposed to be dark. It's pretty vibrant. <laughs> uh-huh. No, it definitely is the most colorful Batman movie, pretty much. Like, you, you could tell, like, there is a massive color palette, especially like, when you have, um, like, Mr. Freeze, that they really put emphasis on the blues. With Poison Ivy, they put emphasis on the reds, and uh, they put emphasis on, uh, what was it, the red, red and greens. Um, even Robin has, has a pretty, has a pretty um, like, even though it seems like a more serious kind of costume than, he like, what he would normally wear... It still has like some colors popping out of it. Like I, I think it was some purples on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yes, uh, that reminds me. Uh, the screw up that I mentioned before, uh, that that did, that does pertain to Robin. Uh, the the goof that uh, that that Mike had mentioned. I might as well explain that. Um, there's a scene in the film where. There's a scene in the film where uh, Poison Ivy's trying to kill Robin with her killer kiss and everything. Uh, it doesn't work because he's got rubber lips. <laughs> he's got fake lips. Yeah, and, uh, and I thought afterward, like, okay, why didn't you just so- sort of grab him and try to kiss him again really, really quick after he yeah, takes them like, off? Do they, and here's another question. Do they do tongue? No, apparently not. They don't need to. <laughs> what, but, is it just... Like, it, it makes no sense if it's just lips, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's so many nitpicks and little and little things that you can... Oh, yeah. Uh, ...that you can pick apart with this film. But what I was noticing, um, even as a kid watching the film, she knocks him into this pool where he starts... He starts wrestling underwater with some... Uh, some live weeds that are trying to attack him under there and he's down there he's down there for a good five minutes or so uh so uh during at during this time uh batman and batgirl come in and start uh start kicking poison ivy's ass and she gets she gets caught in her own yeah, she gets caught in her own Venus flytrap, which doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so the screw up that I'm talking about in particular, halfway through, uh, halfway through the fight, uh, Robin pops his head up out of the water uh, to take a breath, and then and then ends up being pulled back underneath again. You look at it and you say, "Wait a minute! It looks like he's." going back down again on purpose and why is the water flowing why is the water in the pool suddenly flowing the other direction it's because it's the same bit of footage that uh, it's the same clip that they show at the end of the of the fight when he wrestles free uh, from the vines and finally it gets up out of the water. Only what they did was they played it up to a certain point and then backmasked the footage. So he's getting out, but then they reverse the footage and he goes back in. It is so cheaply done. I I cannot believe I'm I'm the only one who who ever called this out amongst anyone I've talked to. That's just uh, you. Mm-hmm. Um, <sighs> they not only did Batman and Robin. They, there's a lot of nitpicks to go through, but the ones that for me was just like kind of the origins of certain characters, like 
um, like Bane's origin in the film. Like you see how Bane becomes Bane, and it's interesting how they do that. And it's deviated from the comics, of course, but it's just like, oh, that's how Bane became Bane. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Um, Apparently, the filmmakers think that Venom has the same properties as steroids, but I don't know. Exactly. It's just like, huh? Um, but then they screwed up Batgirl's origins, pretty much, more or less. They, uh, um, Uncle Alfred! Uncle Alfred! I was just like, <laughs> how, is, how is she related to Alfred and just... No! I mean, they could... I, I mean, they couldn't have connect... Oh, she's Barbara Gordon. Oh, Jim Gordon's daughter. Oh, oh, Detective Jim Gordon in the films are... He's a big, fat you know, guys, like, oh, we can't imagine, uh, Alicia Silverstone being his daughter. No, 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 no. We gotta make him related to Alfred instead. That would be as much, that would be as much, that would make as much sense as John Boyd giving birth to Angelina Jolie, you know? (laughs) (laughs) I I mean, Tomb Raider, yeah. Um, yeah, those, those two things kind of, like, intrigued me. I mean, Batgirl was just, like, threw me off. It's like, really? Come on, it's Barbara Gordon for fuck's sake, not just... But I, I just, that's a nitpick of me. But otherwise, I think the film wasn't that bad. It was just... Meh? It's just... I don't see the hate. I mean, the back credit card scene, I mean... I didn't go... It's one joke that, that comes and goes. Yeah. It no, the, of... the, the, the whole back credit card thing, that's a joke from the nostalgia critic, considering yeah. like, his explosive reaction exactly. to it. Exactly. I mean, I guess from what I'm thinking is that it really is a cheesy, cheesy movie, but I think it's not really the fact that it's a cheesy, bad movie. That's what really pissed people off. It's a cheesy, bad, bad Batman movie. That's what really ticked it. That's really the biggest issue because, like, people don't want to see Batman be in a bad movie. Case in point... Like, look what happened with Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. Um, the thing is, is that, like, with how Batman movies are portrayed and how Tim Burton really set the ground for what bat, what, what pretty much Batman movies should be like, and then, like, it was pretty much set in stone with the Christopher Nolan films. Like, people want to see Batman be taken seriously. Nobody really wants to see the days of... Um, Adam West and just see Batman be dumb and goofy. I know that a lot of people will argue about like Lego Batman and the Lego movie and then his uh, spin-off film in 2017, but that's Lego Batman. I'm talking about just Batman, like something that can equivalent to something like um, you know, the, the like the Dark Knight or the 1989 Batman movie. People want to see the serious Batman. People want to see what Batman represents. If they want jokes from Batman, they'll get it from the Joker, and that's it. Um, but if we're going to see like this Batman movie that's not being taken seriously, it just feels goofy, and like it feels like it could probably be meant more for kids. Like at that point, people are going to be like mad. like people are going to be livid. People will feel like it's injustice to something like Batman. Mm-hmm. So, and that's mostly the thing. It's not really that it's, like, it. yeah, it's true. It does have a lot of its problems. Like, the editing sucks and the writing is horrible. But it's not really that. It's more the fact that it's Batman more than anything else. Like, if Joel Schumacher made another superhero, like, an original superhero movie, like, it's with the same, like, if it has the same script, same everything, except... It's like it's his own superheroes and supervillains that are unrelated to Batman. Nobody's really going to give a crap. But put in Batman into it and everybody lose their minds. Holy mm-hmm. crap, I unintentionally made a Batman quote. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's what it is. It's... Batman is that legacy kind of character like everybody can care for like over the years. Don't like... make... Yeah. Don't mess with Batman, basically. Yeah, it's just like people like Batman, you know, they, they just, they think he's like the ultimate, you know, kind of superhero that they like to watch. And yeah, in this day and era, yeah, you gotta take him seriously, because it's not the 60s anymore, it's not like, 
oh, it's funny Adam West days. No, it's just, especially with the comics, too. Like, in the 80s, you know, the, he had these serious comics, like The Dark Knight Returns, mm -hmm. The Killing Joke, or even Batman Year One. You know, they tell uh, Batman's origins, you know, as, you know, it's dark and serious. You know, it's, it's a new era, and, and they went with it to this day. But, yeah, just Batman and Robin just turned out to be, like, a dud in the group, which is fine. I just, I thought the paint, which is totally un unintentional, like, I understand why, but it's just, it's blown out of proportion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing, it's like, you know, yeah, and like I said, there are only two, there are only two Batmans that are okay to be comical. One is the 1960s Batman with Adam West, because, well, you can't really do anything to change that. It's the 60s, so it is what it is. And, like, it is a weird, goofy era anyways. Um, and then there's Please. also... Uh, there's sorry, also the, oh, sorry. Uh, and then there is also the Lego Batman from the Lego movie. Considering that it's all Legos and stuff, it's not the real Batman, so why not just make a goofy portrayal of Batman? Mm -hmm. and considering how everybody why not give him a dog and call it Ace the Bat Hound? Uh, I think that kind of disappeared in obscurity. Yeah. Like I... we, you know, I know what you're talking about. I remember. I know what you're what you're talking about. I remember. There, I think there was like some kind of TV show with all the DC dogs, but um, yeah, nowadays. Crypto the like, super dog. Yeah. Yeah. Crypto the super dog and Bat and Ace just appears in a few episodes. It was just like. Yeah, but nowadays, like, you have to have a set of rules in order to portray as Batman. And even, like, e even with the Lego movie, like, that's the thing. Americans love the Lego movie. So for that, that's the reason why this bat this Lego Batman gets a pass. Like, if, you know, if, um, like, if it weren't for Lord and Miller being so creative with the writing, like, if they... You know, if they didn't put in as much creativity or effort into the into the writing itself, I know they also directed, but it's more the it's more their writing that really pushed the Lego Movie to how it is right now. Like people would give so much crap to not only them but also to Will Arnett. Oh, the actor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the voice. Yeah. So. And. Yeah. And so there's there is some leeway and there's not so much leeway. Yeah. Anyway, in in the end, I guess we give it a pass. Yeah. What else can you say? Yeah, there's nothing else. So, what do you think about Batman and Robin? Please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching this episode of Cinema Lounge, and pretty soon we'll you'll see the podcast. So. Make sure you subscribe for more content, and we'll see you in the podcast. Ciao for now. See you later, dudes.